Hey guys, it is Fine Wine here again, and today I will be talking about limits involving infinity. Very exciting. Okay, so as I'm fixing to write down, I don't know why I'm taking so long, um, a lot of this has to do with heaviness. Now, heaviness is the term that my school used. Um, it's basically just, I don't know how to describe it, it's just um, comparing the, t the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator of a fraction and seeing where the highest exponent is. So we call it heaviness, which side the numerator or the denominator is heavier, which has the higher um, polynomial. So, but I'll demonstrate that in the um, example. So if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, that is okay. <laughs> So the first, so there are three types. There's same heavy, top heavy, and bottom heavy. Same heavy is where there is the same um, exponent on the top and bottom, like x over x, x squared over x squared, stuff like that. And the way you do that is um, you compare the ratio of the constants next to it. So if it's 3x over 2x, which I I think is actually one of the examples, or maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, it would be 3 over 2. So you just compare the constants, and that's your answer. Second example, or second type, is bottom heavy. Bottom heavy is the best, and you'll see why. If anything is bottom heavy, the answer is always just 0. Very easy. Um, and the third example, I want to make sure you can see it. My face doesn't block this. Um, is top heavy. Sorry, hold up. Let me make sure you can see what I'm writing and my face is not in the way. Um, let's try that. Okay. It's top heavy. Oh, well, that's still in top. Okay. And the answer and the answer to those is either infinity or negative infinity. I'll just slide it over like this. Sorry, you can see my TV trait. Okay. And in order to do this, um, you plug in whatever the limit is, either negative infinity or infinity, into the problem, into whatever exponents you're comparing. Um, that's what I mean by um, leading coefficient. And you see what you get. And it's either going to be negative or positive, and whether it's negative or positive depends or explains why it's negative infinity or positive infinity. Um, you will see that in many examples, I'm, if I'm not explaining that the best. Okay, so we are getting, oh, and then this is a big heads up. You can only use heaviness when the limit is x to infinity or x to negative infinity. So, um, so don't get confused and just plug this in whenever there's any limit because that is not how it works. This, um, problem or this worksheet is limits involving infinity. So don't get that confused. That is a completely other, um, problem. Okay, so we're starting with number one. Number one, sorry, I expanded everything so you could see everything without my face blocking it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to number one. Um, number one is an example of same heavy, meaning the, um, the exponent, the highest exponent on the top and the highest exponent on the bottom is the same. They're both just x. Um, and like I said when I was explaining the rules, same heavy is the ratio um, of the constants in front of your exponent. So as you'll see in this example, it's one half. So it's one over two. Not too hard, pretty easy. Okay, next example, bottom heavy, best kind. <laughs> um, and as you can see, it's because it's x squared over x to the fourth. The fourth is obviously the biggest. It's on the bottom, so it's bottom heavy. So the answer is just zero. Um, very nice. Okay, next one is same heavy again. This can be kind of confusing because the exponents aren't like the first number in the um, fraction. So don't be tricked by that. Don't think it's 9 over 1. Don't think it's negative 1 half over 4. Make sure to scan the whole numerator and the whole denominator for the highest exponents. Um, so just keep that in mind. So also, don't be tricked that this is 3 halves. 
Um, negatives, always tricky, still tricky in this situation. Make sure you always include them. So it's actually 3x squared over negative 2x squared. So don't get that confused. So the answer is negative 3 halves. I guess that's what I was referencing in the same heavy example. Okay, number four. I hope I'm explaining this well. Okay, um, number four is top heavy. So this is our first example of top heavy. Top heavy is the hardest, but don't be intimidated. It's still just kind of basic algebra, just plugging things in and making sure you don't miss a negative, don't miss a square, just very tedious stuff, honestly. But I believe in you. So as you can see, the x squared is on the top, so it's top heavy. Um, so what you have to do is you plug in whatever the limit is. In this case, it's negative infinity. Negative infinity is the harder case. Um, but it's still just plugging in stuff, just you can't miss a negative. That throws everything off. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to plug in negative infinity for the x's. So you get 7 negative infinity squared over 4 times negative infinity. And so, um, as you know, the square cancels out the negative infinity. So it's really 7 infinity over 4 times negative infinity. Um, so it's really infinity over negative infinity. Sorry for the pause. Okay, so it's really 7 infinity over negative infinity, which is really just infinity over negative infinity, which is negative. So the answer is negative infinity. So you just have to work out and plug in things to see if it's going to be negative or not. Um, you just have to keep track of the negatives and make sure you don't miss one, drop one, lose one, add one. Um, you just have to make sure that that's the whole point of plugging things in. Okay, number five, moving on, is bottom heavy best kind? Um, remember that the exponent doesn't have to be the first number in the um, numerator or denominator. So, oh, I literally, okay, sorry, it's top heavy. Um, I was just reading my own work and I obviously made a mistake there. Um, so once again, you're going to have to pl <laughs> plug in um, this time it's infinity because the limit is to infinity. So you're going to have to plug in infinity into the leading exponents, as in the highest exponents. So it's really 9 times infinity squared over negative 29 times infinity, which in reality is just infinity over negative infinity. The numbers don't really matter. Infinity is a lot bigger. Um, so once again, the answer is negative infinity. Um, because of that um, negative from the negative 29. Okay, moving on. This one is bottom heavy. <laughs> okay, um, so as you can see, it's 5x over 4x cubed. Um, so that's nice. Um, so like I said, bottom heavy is the easiest, just zero. Okay, number seven. Number seven as you can see, is top heavy, 2x to the 5th over 8x to the 4th. So you're going to have to plug in the limit again, which in this case is negative infinity. Um, so it's really 2 times negative infinity to the 5th over 8 times negative infinity to the 4th. So um, in reality, it's negative infinity. I don't know what that glitch was. I'm sorry. It's um, negative infinity over positive infinity because of the positive, ex or not the positive, the even exponent. So once again, the answer is negative infinity. Just have to keep track of the negatives. Okay, this is where things start getting like a little funky, not too funky. That's the back page. Just kidding. Um, but Square roots complicate things, obviously, with exponents. Um, so this problem is actually same heavy. I know you're like, but there's an x squared on the top. That's so weird. And I'm like, yes, it is so weird, but it's how math works. Um, so really, the square root of 36 times x squared, or just I'll do x squared, the square root of x squared really just equals x. That's how square roots work. Um, it takes away the exponent. Or... You know what I mean. You know how square roots work. But the only thing I'm going to say about this is, um, especially when it's top heavy, you have to keep in mind 
negatives because once again negatives are weird um i believe maybe we do a problem that does that yeah we, there is a problem that we um that it is top heavy and there's a square root but just keep in mind that if you're plugging in um like negative infinity um into a square root it has to be positive because that's how things work um you just have to just just make sure you do good math really um yeah okay um be so for number eight um it's really just 6x over 9x basically and as you know that same heavy the answer is just 6 over 9 or 2 thirds if you want to simplify it. Um, yeah. Okay. Number 9 is the same thing. Um, we're using um, square roots. But if you will notice, the limit is to negative infinity. So we are going to be dealing with the negative infinity and the um, square root. So it's 2x over the square root of 25x squared. So, um, you have to plug in, or you, do, or, sorry, excuse me, so it's really just the ratio again, um, 2x over 5x, so you might just think, oh gosh, it's 2 fifths, but no, you have to pay attention to the pesky negative, so in order to figure out whether this answer is negative or not, you're going to have to plug in negative infinity. I know that sounds weird. This is not top heavy, but you still have to plug in negative infinity in order to see if the two fifths, which you get from the same heavy ratio, will be negative. And I'm going to work it out right here. So you really get two over ne two times negative infinity over the square root of 25 negative infinity squared. So, um... You just have, you basically, it's negative over positive, which means the two-fifths is actually negative. Um, the square root of infinity is positive, so. Um, sorry for my fingers. Um, so you get two-fifths, and it is, in fact, negative. Um, Backsheet. Halfway there. Good job, guys. Um, sorry, it's a little cut off. I'll move it down slightly. Okay. Oh, can't see it. There we go. Um, top heavy is this one. And you're like, wow, that's a really weird um, exponent. How do you do that? And I will show you. Um, so the way I think is easiest to do this is um, just like when you're taking a derivative and there's a weird exponent, you want to like write it out. Um, so I actually wrote out three halves because it's three divided by two because of the square root. And then just over x um, or 10x. Um, so, sorry, the top is cut off. Um, so three halves is bigger than one. <laughs> so it's top heavy. So you have to... Um, So you have to plug in, um, so you get infinity to the three halves over ten times infinity or just infinity. Um, no negatives pop up, which is great, so the answer is infinity. Number eleven. Um, okay. One second. Let me make sure. Yes. Okay. This is where it gets funky. This is where we stop using heaviness which stinks, I know. It's the easier way of solving things. But for things that are not polynomials, as I'm writing out very slowly, um, you cannot use heaviness just because, I don't know, it just doesn't work. Um, so you actually just have to plug in whatever the limit is and solve. Um, these can be complicated because of negatives and just weird algebra, just a lot of algebra. But... Um, there's nothing that's too hard of a concept. It's just kind of tedious, monotonous. You can make careless mistakes. Okay, so we'll start with number 11. Um, so for number 11, I am just solving... Um, I don't know why it's doing um, yeah, I'm just solving for a common denominator. Um, let me back up so you can see it. 
Okay, yes. Okay, so I just solved for a common denominator there. Um, just to make it simpler so I can combine the fraction to plug in negative infinity, which is the limit, um, more easily. Um, but you don't. You definitely don't have to do that. Um, I just did because I thought it would be easier. Um, so you end up getting 15 minus x squared over 3x. And then you have to plug in negative infinity where the x's are. Um, let me like go faster because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Yes. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I plugged in um, negative infinity for those. And... Okay, so I plugged in um, negative infinity, and sorry when I was writing this, I got confused by negatives, um, so it might take me <laughs> a minute, so I'm going to fast forward. Um, yeah, well, I got really confused. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, so really, so I got confused because there are a lot of negatives. Um, so the negative infinity squared obviously becomes positive. And I was like, wow, this like has to be negative then. But then I remembered that this negative right here makes this infinity negative again. So it's really negative infinity over negative infinity, which is positive. So like I said, these things can be super confusing um, with negatives. <laughs> it's just, this just can be confusing. Um, so you just have to pay attention and take your time um, and just make sure you're mi not making any careless mistakes because it's very easy to do. Um, okay, moving on from that difficult problem, we are going to number 12. Okay, I'm sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background. That's what that is. I have two puppies, so um, they're being very loud right now. Um, so I'm trying to like make sure you can see this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, so, um, e to the infinity, <laughs> e to the infinity is infinity. And really, anything greater than 1 to the infinity is infinity. Because if you keep multiplying it by itself, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it ultimately turns into infinity. So if you multiply something by itself infinity times, it's obviously going to be, well, not obviously, but it's going to be infinity. So, um, so yes, so in this case, um, I'm going to work it out in just a second, um, but so, I don't know why I'm taking so long, I wrote this really slow, I guess, um, <laughs> so you're going to get negative 5, and you have to, and you're plugging in whatever the limit it is, in this case it's positive infinity, remember we're just doing infinity stuff on this worksheet, um, so you get negative 5, Oh, you, well, you can eliminate the 5 because it's just a constant. Um, so you get negative infinity, or negative e to the negative x, which is really, I skipped a step, I'm sorry. So you get negative e to the negative x, and in order to simplify this, I, um, let me see if I can draw it. I just put the, um, I just moved the whole thing down to get rid of that negative exponent, so I really did 1 over or negative 1 over e to the x. Sorry, I didn't write that out. I thought I did, obviously. But, um, and then I plugged in infinity. And that's how I get 1 over e to the infinity. Um, sorry, I didn't write that out. So really, you get negative 1 over infinity, because e to the infinity, anything greater than 1 to the infinity, is infinity. And then that is actually 0. Um, I explain why I write it out, but I'll also talk it out too. So, um, I just wrote a tiny number actually, so I'll explain it right now. Okay, so if you think about it, my math teacher always used to use a, like a chocolate bar example. Um, so like if you, like say it's a fraction like one fourth, so you're dividing something in four parts. So those are like decently sized parts if it's a chocolate bar, but if you divide it into a infinity parts those parts are going to be so small that they're just negligible so it's really just zero um the de the denominator just gets so huge that it's just not really even a number anymore um 
and it's zero because it's just so small. So any so so um anything divided by infinity is going to be zero just because infinity is so massive that it makes the fraction so small that it just becomes negligible and is zero. We're going to use that a couple times in the rest of the worksheet, so I just wanted to explain it through right now um, so that I don't have to re-explain it every time. Um, but I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, you just, you just have to roll with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so moving on, number 13. So number 13, once again, it's not a polynomial, so we have to just plug in, in the, this case, infinity. That's what the limit's going towards. Um, but I think before I do that, oh wait, maybe not. Yeah, so you're plugging in infinity just for the x. Um, I cut out the minus, the infinity divided by 2 because, I mean, that doesn't matter. Um, kind of like 1 over infinity or anything over infinity is 0. Um, if the infinity is in the numerator, then it's infinity just because infinity is so massive that it just overwhelms and makes any other any denominator negligible so i just said um negative infinity so i cut out that um over two in that exponent um so to simplify this i did one over 10 to the infinity i just moved it to the denominator to get rid of that negative um to make things simpler um so next, I just, I'm just still simplifying. I'm just trying to write out every step for you guys. Um, you get 1 over infinity because anything to the infinity is infinity. That's demonstrated right here. 10 is obviously greater than 1, so it's going to become infinity. Um, and then remember, like we said, if infinity is in the denominator, it becomes 0 just because that number is so small. So you get really 8 divided by 4, and that is 2. So it simplifies to a nice number, but it can be pretty complicated in the working out parts. So I tried to explain it the best I could for you guys. Um, so um, number 14. So I am just plugging in infinity, um, and then I'm just going to simplify it out for you guys again. Um, so I think my next step that I do is once again, like I did up here, I move that infinity... I create another fraction so that infinity becomes positive so it won't be as confusing. Um, and now I am simplifying things. Remember, anything to the infinity is infinity. I keep saying that. That's like the message of the story. Um, and then, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then, yeah. And that's the same case with that e to the infinity. Um, so you get infinity over 1 plus 0, because remember, if infinity is the denominator, it is 0, um, like was like when I wrote tiny number. <laughs> um, and so infinity over 1, just infinity. Okay, <laughs> next one. Okay, this one, a little more complicated, just because it's the limit is to negative infinity. Um, don't be intimidated, though. It's still very doable it's just a little more negative to um, mess with your brain a little bit but it's okay um, so I'm just plugging in infinity or the negative infinity right now and I actually made a mistake there I'm going to go back and correct it um, but just see that there's a negative there so like this one actually becomes positive and then right here is where I get confused and I'm like what um, so because this is negative and this is negative, this is actually positive. I'm fixing to correct it. It just, like I said, negatives, man, they're confusing. Um, yeah, so it's just a positive infinity. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, as I continue writing because I'm the slow writer, um, yeah, it's just one. I just, the whole, the only thing I did in that step besides correct my mistake is like I said, I just moved this into the denominator so that this negative will go away. Um, and remember, well, I guess, yeah, 1 over infinity because e to the infinity is infinity. And then 1 plus infinity because e to the infinity is infinity. And then remember, 1 over infinity is 0. 
And so you end up getting 0 over infinity, which is actually 0, which makes sense um, because 0 is in the numerator and because infinity is in the denominator. So both of those things leap to 0, so the answer is 0. Okay, so this is kind of another um, turning point. This can get kind of confusing. Um, I'll explain it when I like write it out because I feel like words will also help. Um, I bet you're wondering, like, dang, what do I do in this situation? And this is when your old friend log rules help. <laughs> um, so if you remember, um, if two logs of the same order, I don't know, these are both ln, so they're the same log, um, you can combine them if they're subtracted by just creating one natural log where one is divided by the other. So I'm just using that log rule to simplify this. Um, and then you're still probably asking, what the heck, what do I do? Um, and I'm fixing to write it out again, and I'm probably going to write it slowly. Huh, sorry. But um, you can actually use heaviness in this situation, which is super nice because heaviness is obviously, well, maybe not, to me at least, it's a lot easier than all of this simplifying and, like, negatives and, like, just, it can... I think heaviness is easier. Um, so because logs and nat the natural log is um, continuous, I don't, um, we can actually just bring the limit inside of the log and behave like it's not there while we're solving the limit. Um, so that's why you can use heaviness. That's not the best explanation, but all you really need to know is that you could use heaviness and make your life a lot easier okay so so now that we are using heaviness um as you can see it's same heavy um so i will write out the answer so the answer is the natural log of three halves now in the answer you still have to write out the natural log you can't just write three halves because remember the ln the natural log is still there you just have to you can use heaviness and not deal with the natural log while you're solving, but in the answer, you still have to include the natural log because it's part, because you're taking the limit of the natural log. Um, so don't forget to write in ln. Don't just say three halves because that is not right. Okay, moving on. Number 17, I would say the most complicated problem on the worksheet simply because I am not great at trig. I even like, made the video on like trig, but like I am not the best at it, and... That is why I thought this one was hard, but, like, if you are, then, like, not a hard problem. So, once again, we can use heaviness because, just like the natural log, um, trig functions are continuous. So, you can use heaviness in the parentheses. And this problem is top-heavy because it's x squared over negative x, or the opposite of x. Um, so, um, you have to plus, sorry. I'm taking a long time when I'm writing it because I'm kind of confused because of trig. Um, so what you'll do is, like any top-heavy problem, you're going to plug in infinity. So you get infinity squared over negative infinity. Um, and that's negative infinity because there's um, because this fraction ends up being negative. Um, Y'all know that. <laughs> so you get tan the inverse tangent of negative infinity and if you are like me you're like what the heck is that and I will tell you when I write it out um, so what you have to do or what I did in this um, example to demonstrate to you guys sorry if you can see my look okay I just want to make sure you can see it all um, what I did is I drew a graph to explain what um, the inverse tan of negative infinity is um, I'll, like, speed through me drawing it because you don't really need to know. I mean, you'll see it. Um, okay. So, oh, wait. I'll, yeah. So, this is the graph of inverse tangent. Beautiful, right? Um, I just, you just kind of have to memorize that, I guess, like, or just, memorize what the inverse tangent things or values are um like there's no secret recipe 
to learning that. It's just kind of memorization. Um, but anyway, so as I just wrote out, there's an, like, I, I didn't draw it super well, but there are asymptotes um, at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 right here. And we are looking at negative infinity. Remember, negative infinity comes from right here. And so negative infinity is like way over here. And so that value, the asymptote, is the, the graph gets really, really close to asymptote pi over 2. So you, we just call it pi over 2. Yeah. I probably didn't explain that the best. Um, so because negative infinity is so far this way, this line will get so close to this asymptote that we can just qualify it as pi over 2. These two lines are asymptotes. And like, like you know how asymptotes work, the graph gets really, really close to it but never quite reaches it, but we're just going to say it does. Okay, moving on. Number 18. Um, this also introduces a new concept, but yay, these are the last two problems. Okay, <laughs> um, so I think I'm fixing to write it. Okay, so in reality, this limit is just the equivalent of the limit of x over x. And you're like, what? And that is because cosine, um, because it oscillates between negative 1 and 1, it's never going to be like a huge value. It's never, no matter what x is, it's cosine of whatever x is is going to equal in between negative 1 and 1. So it's never, it's never going to be the biggest value. So you can really just treat it as a constant or, and you don't have to, th it's not a polynomial, so you don't have to think about it in, you don't have to consider its heaviness because it's never going to be a big influencer, so you can just cross it out, pretend like it never existed. Um, so it's just it's just a small variable. Um, sorry for the pause. Um, my dogs got really loud again, so I just decided to like pause it until they were quiet. Um, so cosine is um, it's it's just going to be a small variable, so you can really just count it out. Um, so like I said, this is kind of just like x over x, and that ratio is just 1. So that's a pretty simple problem once you figure out what to do with the cosine x. Um, this one, sine x, is the same way. It's just going to be between negative 1 and 1. So cosine and sine x you can just can, is just a small variable, so you can count it out. So we just treat this with normal heaviness, and in this case, it's bottom heavy. Um, and bottom heavy is the best because it is always zero. So, yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm taking so long to write the zero. Yes. Okay. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, remember, just... I'm just going to go through this again. Remember, heaviness can be used only when it's negative infinity and infinity. The limits to negative infinity and infinity. And, and, when the fraction, or whatever the limit, whatever the limit is being, whatever your, whatever this is, whatever is being taken, I don't know how to say it, but it has to be polynomial. <laughs> Bottom line, if it's not a polynomial, you're just going to have to rough it and plug in another, whatever the limits to and solve. Um, but remember, if it is a polynomial, um, you can use heaviness, which I think is a lot easier. Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot harder to make a mistake in limit in heaviness, so that is what I recommend if you can. Thank you guys for watching. Um, keep coming here for keep coming to Memphis Community University for other math videos and um, we appreciate the watch. Have a good day.